accountable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Good. So read that Bible every day. Another thing to know as a Christian is, is you need to spend time praying. Brother Will did an exceptional job last week on the subject of prayer, how important it is, um, both as an individual, having that personal relationship with Christ, with God, and having that in congregation, speaking in public and, and acknowledging God verbally. So not just privately, but, but as a congregation also. Um, quality and quantity we always stress in prayer. God knows, again, what you're going to pray for before you ask. So don't use repetition more, more than you have to, right? Because he already knows what you're going to say. So make it honest. Always make your prayers honest. The quality should be, should be good. But he wants to hear from you. The quantity does not matter. Well, it really does matter because he wants to hear from you all the time. Not just, again, I, Sister Sue and I have talked about it. My prayers are at night. I set aside my times at night to get on my knees and say my prayers. I'm getting better that I'll pray in the middle of the day. I'll catch myself in the morning saying a prayer now. So getting better, getting stronger, but being closer to God. Being a Christian now, which I was not, um, I just feel so much closer to God now. And, and being able to pray and understand, it just, it just brings more comfort. I think Cheryl has seen it in me that I was, I was that Vince Lombardi screaming at people and using foul language and coaching and coaching college football and high school football and out of control at times. I, don't, I couldn't go back and do that now. I would coach in a totally different way if they would accept me. <laughs> but that doesn't have to be done. We, we're in a society that we think the more we yell, the louder we get. The language we use, we get attention. Well, you get attention, but, it, but it's not the best attention, right? Uh, it's also important to be baptized as a Christian now that, you've, now that you're saved because it shows the public your obedience to God. Okay, so to get baptized is important. Uh, necessary for salvation, right? It, it's up for debate, right, with, 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 with Scripture. But it's very important to get it because you're actually showing and identifying with Christ through, through baptism. So it's very important to do. And that brings us to September 3rd, which uh, PJ will do down at Trinity Beach. And that's an awesome thing to watch. It's a more, even more awesome to be baptized, right, yourself. But um, it's really awesome to see teenagers or young people, and then even on the same level with adults being baptized. So we need to be there on September 3rd and witness that. That is just, uh, it's exceptional to watch. So baptism is important. Uh, as we look at Romans 6, 3 and 4. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death. In order that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk into, walk in newest of life. Thank you. It's also important to join a church that teaches the word of God above everything else. Uh, this will fill your minds with his word. We share his word in here. We exemplify his word. Um, that's the focal, the focal point of our messages. Whoever speaks God's message up here, not that important of who does it. It's just that it's done and that we focus on his message and and what he has to tell us. So, again, join a church that, that focuses on God's will, God's message, and, and we're here. I was talking to Sister Alma and Sister Linda this morning, having my donut and a cup of coffee, which actually starts about 10.15. <laughs> but we were talking about that, and um, I lost my train of thought now because of you. Oh, church to be healthy that's the key. If our church is healthy, it will grow. God is in charge of growth. And I think Brother Will and I have expanded on that and said that several times, that God is in charge of growth. So we just need to focus on being healthy, and I think we're there. There's so much happiness in this church. Um, I can honestly tell you guys I love you guys. 
Um, because this church is, uh, it's amazing to walk into, and I've never experienced that before in my life, where you're going to get a hug from each and everybody in this church. You're going to have people tell you they love you, um, with no exception. And that's really rare. In today's world, that's really, really rare. So I appreciate you guys, and that's uh, something that I, when I read this, that you have to join a church that teaches the Word of God. We don't have to worry about that. We're there. We're there, and we're healthy. So we will grow because of our health. Um, as we now look at Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and morrow, and, ab- and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. That's a good one. That's a good one. So you will be growing in your Christian life as we look at Matthew 28, 18, 20. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Powerful uh, messages. Reading the Bible, praying, and being in church that dwells on the Word of God will result in understanding while providing peace and comfort. Peace and comfort's a key. I know, I, I'm sure you felt the same as I have. Once you became a Christian, the comfort and the peace is overwhelming. It's just, it's amazing, you feel. So, goodbye to worry in most cases. We still worry, right? We still have things come up. But you will still have trials and tribulations along the way, but you will be receiving wisdom and direction in dealing with, with whatever comes your way. A calming effect will result and direction will be clear over time. Just keep being in the Word of God, and things will become more clearer and clearer and clearer all the time as you keep going. You need to tell others what God has done in your life. Share that with other people. Another thing about being a Christian, don't be embarrassed by being a Christian. That's absolutely ridiculous, right? Share what God has done in your life and is doing, not just what He's done, but what He continues to do daily by the minute. Our lives are to make a difference in others' lives also. Do good to others, always. Do good to others. Again, we've probably all been guilty of, I remember my, uh, my dad always used to tell me, don't trust anyone until they earn your trust. And I always lived that way because you'll be on a mountaintop and you're trusting and trusting and trusting Somebody breaks that trust, you fall off the mountain. But don't trust unless they earn your trust. My mom was the total opposite. And mom was hurt a little more often than dad was because she trusted everybody. So just, uh, I always thought that was, but you still do good to others. Do good to others. Whether they're mean to you, cruel to you, you, you mistrust them in some way, still treat them with dignity and humble yourself. Right? So, so, yeah, right. Treat them as your brother, right, and your sister, because we all are. Uh, again, almost, almost most people, when they become a child of God, nobody tells them what to do or what to expect as a result of it, like we just said. It is a serious thing to choose Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Very serious thing. And to follow him by virtue of your own free will. No one made you make that choice. Right? God gave us free will. So to choose that free will and to choose to follow Christ is a huge decision. And what comes with that is a huge responsibility. So now if you're going to be the kind of person God wants you to be and have success leading a Christian life, we're going to look at Philippians uh, chapter 2, verses 5 through 13. If you have access to a Bible... Okay, even if you don't have access to a Bible. But if you do, you can follow along. It's, uh, mine is the American Standard. You may have an H- uh, with, with, uh, NIV, or you might have a uh, King James, or different. and the verbiage is different. It's a little different. It all means the same, right? It's just a little different in, in, its, in its word or its, its usage. So this is a very powerful and profound look at Christian life when you're looking at Philippians 2, 5 through 13. I have researched and researched, 
and research. Need a new uh, cartridge for our printer. Um, but I've looked at all kinds of biblical scholars. Um, Tony Evans is, is a great one. If you ever listen to Tony Evans on uh, YouTube, watch him. And then, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Charles Stanley, who just passed away this last March, but uh, was in service as a pastor for 40-some-odd years. Phenomenal speaker, very knowledgeable. So again, doing a lot of research. Uh, ooh, it's a little better. I'm almost eating it now. <laughs> Coming in. Um, a lot of biblical scholars, so a lot of research, but it's amazing. And then be as specific as possible in this, in this chapter. This is an awesome chapter for Christian life. So let me just read through this quickly. Quickly is a key word for me. Philippians 2, uh, 5 through 13. Have this attitude in yourselves, which, also in, in, which, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross, one of the most gruesome ways to die. Therefore also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Very powerful, and I'm doing the best I can to get this to you, because I, I take, and I know Will does the same way, we take on a huge responsibility to get this right. It's God's word, and we, we have to get this right. So looking at a lot of different people that have helped me with this, including my wife, Cheryl, who's very knowledgeable. She's okay to live with. Um, first off, it's important to know the person and place of Jesus Christ in your life. Not just the person, but the place. Paul said Jesus is the incarnate Son of God, which means he was God who came in the flesh. Walked among men to help us understand who God is and what he's like. So he came here to help us understand God. Which, which huge for us. He obeyed the Father even to the point of going to the cross. That is the reason Jesus came, was to die for us. Think about this. God sends his son to die on the cross to make it possible for us to be forgiven and have a solid relationship with him and go to heaven. This means there is something very serious about living a life of sin. For God to send his only begotten son the church says, um, there's something very serious for God to do that. There's something very serious about living a life of sin, to send your only begotten son. This scripture provides us further insight into God the Father and God the Son, while doing so gives us direction in living our Christian life. So if we look at the first, I got to go back to my page. If we look at the uh, Philippians 2, chapter 5, or chapter 2, verse 5, the first segment, Jesus always looked at, let me read that, have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. So we look at just that piece, we look at Jesus always looked out for the interests of others through his love and guidance, which he also expects from us. If you and I are ever going to be servants as Christ was, we, if we're going to have the same attitude as Christ, we're going to have to give up our rights, give up our privileges, and humble ourselves in the presence of others, as Christ did. So that kind of says what uh, the chapter 5 is, is kind of relating to, being, more, being very specific on, chapter, on that chapter. So 
If we go to 2.6, the beginning of the verse, let me read that again to you, sorry, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. Now, Jesus, when he came here, was truly God, right? There's no question he's still God. He's truly God. But he did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. So to break that down, the beginning of the verse refers to Jesus as being in the form of God. In other words, Jesus and God are equal. The second part of this verse notes the big difference between how Jesus could have behaved and how he actually lived. There's a big difference. He could have come to earth to demand every person grovel in front of him. He, is, he has that power. Instead of treating others as his servants, he became a servant to the people. Again, the emphasis on equality with God clearly shows Paul's belief that Jesus is equal with God the Father. Yet Jesus did not grasp or hold on to his positional authority. He instead came humbly as a servant, giving his life to serve others. How awesome is that? With the power he had as God to come here and serve us, and work as a servant, how much did he humble himself? He wants us to humble ourselves also to others and help others as he did. So now we go down to number uh, the seven, verse seven, but he emptied himself. Christ emptied himself, taking the form of a bond servant and being made in the likeness of men. He emptied himself, which means although he was fully God, he set aside some of his divine rights and again, humbly served the people. He did not scheme to fill himself of more attributes of deity. He went in the opposite direction, which he didn't have to do, but he did for us, emptying and humbling himself to take on the lowly form of man slash servant. So he gave us a lot by humbling himself and creating us as being important, treating us as, as we're really important, which is awesome for him to do. So he expects things like that from us. If we look at uh, verse 8, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. As God came to earth as a servant, an act of total obedience to the will of the Father. The will of the Father was to send him to earth, right? To die on the cross for us. So the will of the Father, obedient to the point of death on a cross, and in this way, one could say he served or was a servant also to the will of the Father, to the people, but also to the will of the Father. This was the will of the Father that he come here and die on the cross for our sins. That's huge. So we go down to nine, therefore also God highly exalted him. So God's rewarding him, right? And bestowed on him the name which is above every name. So if we look at that, because of this, God the Father highly exalted his name above all other names. The name of Jesus is the highest name there is. The highest name there is. Even above Tom or Cheryl or Will, or, right? There is no name that carries more quality or is more heavenly. There is no name that has the power and the energy than the name of Jesus Christ. Think about that. And here's God the Father exalting his son, giving him the name, the mightiest name of all, with all the energy. If we look at 10 and 11, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth. Christ came as Lord, not only Savior. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess Jesus Christ is Lord. We, somewhere along the way, a lot of people, some churches, have separated the Savior from the Lord. Most of the time you hear Jesus, Jesus is my Savior. Jesus died on the cross for my sins. He's my Savior. Sometimes they'll leave out that he's Lord. You can't leave that out. Lord means boss. He is your boss, right? He is the sovereign ruler. He's the sovereign leader. 
Does that make sense to everybody? I mean, when you say he's your Savior and your Lord, that means he's in charge. He's in charge. He's the sovereign ruler, creator, and things are sustained by him. To put it simply, he is the boss. He's your boss if you choose to follow him. Being saved, you not only got Jesus as your Savior, which means you not only got your sins forgiven, but you chose to follow. That was your choice, your free will to follow. Somewhere along the way, again, we separated Savior from Lordship. Remember, Jesus is not two persons. He is Savior and Lord, not or. Savior and Lord, one person. There are those who say, I accept Christ as my Savior, but I won't commit to him being my boss. Have you ever heard anybody say that? Oh, yeah, Jesus Christ is my Savior. He's my Savior. But I'm going to make decisions. I'm going to do the Burger King. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to draw a line in the sand. He's my Savior, but I'm not crossing that line because I'm going to do things the way I want to do them. I'm going to do them on my schedule, not on his schedule. I don't want any individual, a dictator, telling me what to do and when to do it. Have you heard people? I, I have. I've heard people, I'll accept him as my Savior, but I will not accept the fact that I'm going to have this person tell me what to do and when to do it. Well, you can't, yeah, it doesn't work both ways. doesn't work both ways, right? So, um, this is where I draw the line. But when you do that, you sever your relationship with Jesus and become a sheep without a shepherd. Again, Brother Will's one of his favorite verse, right? That sheep and that shepherd running around out there. Um, but you become a sheep without a shepherd. That's a disastrous way to live your life. And that sheep eventually is going to fall off the hillside or the cliff. It's a disastrous way to live your life if you're not accepting Jesus as your Lord. So Savior and Lord. So look at uh, 12. 2.12, so then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but not much more in my, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Trembling. If you look at that, this is one of the devil's biggest verses that he actually dwells on. Satan will dwell on this and has convinced some people, probably multitudes of people, that God is saying here, work for your salvation. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, work out your salvation. If, if, if we're working for our salvation, before I say this, I want to say God does not make mistakes, right? He's mistake-free. But if we're working for our salvation then God made the biggest mistake in the history of, human, of human, mankind, in mankind by sending his son to die on the cross for our sins would have been the biggest mistake God made in the history of man. He doesn't make mistakes, so I'm not saying he made a mistake. But if we have to work for salvation, that would have been a mistake. So we don't have to work for salvation. What this statement says, and, and the devil plays on that pretty heavily, Work out your salvation. So now the scripture says, work out your salvation. This does not mean work for your salvation. It means work out what's already there. God has placed work in you to be done. We are living out what he has placed within us. Put God's work in his plan into action. Energize it. Work on it. Work it out. He's given us the blueprint. If you want to look at it this way as an analogy, He's given us the blueprint, now do the work for him and honor him. If you do that, you're going to please God because you're doing his will. You're completing his will. He's given you work to do. If, hopefully that makes sense. But that's, uh, that was huge. And then fear and trembling, fear and trembling just means be cautious. Like we always say, fear God. The fear of God is in you. The fear of God. That doesn't mean... You're deathly afraid of God, like he's going to slap you upside the head, right, and criticize you and put you down. He doesn't. He's a loving God. So you don't fear God in that sense, but you do this with fear, work out salvation with fear and trembling. You work it out by being cautious. Before you make decisions, think about it, right? So you're pretty sure about what you're doing, but and then just be sure. But But again, you don't have to 
You don't have to fear the results because are you going to make mistakes? We're going to make mistakes. And God knows that. But do the best you can on working that out. So work out your salvation. And then in 13, finally, it says, for, for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. God works in you and is pleased when you do the work. He's pleased when you do the work that he gives you. Don't be afraid because he will not give you any work without enabling you to do it. He won't give you any work that he knows you're un- incapable of doing. He'll give you work that he knows you're capable of handling. He won't give you anything you can't handle. And he'll give you the tools to do the work to complete the work. He's, he's a great God. He's a God of perfection, right? He's not going to hand you stuff. You're going to build a house without the hammer. No, God enables you and gives you the necessary tools to complete the work. I think that's awesome. He equips you to do the job. He just doesn't give you all this work and pile it on. No, he knows you can complete the job. So, and then when you complete the job, where's all the glory go? Not to you. It goes to God. You're doing this for God. It pleases him because you're doing the work he gave you. You're honoring him by completing the job that he gave you. That's a, that's a good person, right? He's looking at you as, man, that, that's, that's an awesome person. He did what I asked him to do. So when you remember, me, be more concerned for God's glory, however, than for your own relief. Right? Be concerned for God's glory. So let's continue to work for God and remember all He has done for us. It's, it's plenty, right? All He has done for us. So let's pray. God, thank you for your message today as we realize we are Christians saved by your grace. As Christians, we are to exemplify you, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by living your life, the life of Christ. It's a serious thing to choose you as our Lord and Savior and to follow you by virtue of our own free will. May we exemplify our Christian faith through our conversation, conduct, and character in all we do. All glory to you as we continue to perform the work you provided us as the will of the Father. In your love, name, and power we pray. Amen. One thing I just wanted to add at the end, in, in conversation, conduct, and character, be careful, because sometimes we're all, I'm guilty, I can't say everybody. Sometimes you go into a, my family's pretty raunchy sometimes. Cheryl still married me, which is really odd. Um, but if you go into a family setting sometimes, somebody will tell a filthy joke, right? And you'll laugh at it. Or you'll be exposed to certain things that are probably not godly, right? Or we know they're not godly. But when you do that, and you get involved in that, and you show conduct that's not Christ-like, conversation that's not Christ-like, character that's not Christ-like, in the words of Charles Stanley, you short-circuit the testimony, right? You're bringing things in that should never have been brought in. They're not godly. They're not a life of Christ. So you short-circuit that testimony when you're doing things. Are we guilty of that? Yeah, we're guilty of that. (laughs) But again, God's obviously forgiving God. He looks at us. He knows we're not the sharpest tool in the shed, right? He knows we're going to make mistakes, and we continue to make mistakes, but he knows that. Are are we done with our sin? Are all of us in this room never going to sin again? No. No. No, we try not to, we do the best we can, but he gave the ultimate gift by putting his son, sending his son to die on a cross for us. So how much more of a gift can we get than that? That's that's an awesome gift that he gave us. So anyway, I'm going to thank you guys, but again, I I love you guys, and uh, it's an honor to be here. It really is. It's an honor to present God's message. I know Brother Will feels the same way, and and working with Will is an honor for me also. So, thank you. You got quiet on the side.
forces I'm not scared of your fears All your doubts bring them here I'm wiping all of your tears He does He does It's just like Jesus To give me strength when I need it Hope when I cannot see When I'm Powerful words in that song. When nobody else wants you, he wants you. And just like Tom's sermon this morning, maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you got a problem. Maybe you got an issue. And just like I said last week, we've all done this. It's nothing new. We all have carries. We all have worries. But do we really give it to God when we pray? I can't stress enough in my life how many times I've prayed and went, okay, I'm good now. And then 10 minutes, 20 minutes, two days, a week, a month, it's right back there nagging at you. Because you, like I said last week, you picked that bag of garbage up, weighting you down, hurting your back and legs, and you just carry it. It's not what our will is for our life to get better with Christ. It's what his will is for our life to get better with him because we're surrendering to him. So, as we do every week, and we'll get into prayer requests here in a moment, this altar is here for a purpose. It is here for a reason. It's here 
for you to do just what I said. Surrender those cares. Surrender those worries. Give it to God. It's so empowering when you can get down on your knees, pray to your creator to take away grief and actually do it and feel that worry go away. If you're here this morning and you have that problem, this is open to you now. I invite you. He invites you. Come forward. Give it away. Life is a split second of time. It's gone before you know it. Why wait? Sister Ginger, if you would come and play, please. I take this time very serious because there are so many times in my life that I have not respected it enough to do this. I can't imprint upon your guys' minds enough. This is a serious thing. We can't go out into the world and bring people to Christ like Tom was talking about this morning if we're not 100. He's 100 all the time, every day, 365 days a year. It doesn't matter if it's raining outside. It doesn't matter, Beth Ann, if it's a snowy day or a sunny day. He's 100. If we respect him and we love him enough for what he's done in our life and this family that he's given us, to be able to get down on our knees and say, God, I'm struggling. Please take this from me. I got nobody else. If we don't respect him enough to do that, I challenge you, family, if that's you, it's been me, and I've said this to myself, if I'm doing that, then why am I here? All the work I'm putting in to help God's word get out there. If I'm doing all that work, but I'm not doing that, and I'm not trusting him enough to give him what he wants, our cares, because we can't do it without him. Without him, we're nothing. We're a pebble. With him, we become a beautiful walkway for other people to come to him. If you got that care on your mind, please come. And if you don't want to get forward, if that's too much for you, we'll come to you. We've seen it every week. It's up to you. Thank you, sis. Now, it's not over. You might have something creep up through the week. Remember the phone list that you've been given if you're a part of the prayer chain of the church. 
reach out to someone, I challenge you to do that. We're all helpful people with that in mind. And I do know this morning I've spoken to Ginger before church. We note that her sister Mary is not here this morning. So she's going to be the first name that I put on the list. Do we have any other prayer requests this morning? Yes, ma'am. Shannon. Shannon and Andrew. Shannon, Andrew, and Michelle. Okay. Yes. Okay. Firefighters in Clark Fork. I'm going to put mom's family and everyone note that that's just me saying Linda without saying Linda, please. Okay. Brother Tom. Okay. 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 Absolutely. So it's been a couple weeks. Okay. Sure, absolutely. Brother Dwayne. Yes, Aunt Ruthie. Pray for you. Absolutely, dear. We can do that for you. No problem. Yes, absolutely, Sister D. Absolutely. Malachi? Yes. Yeah, I do believe I heard last week he is actually... He's close to going to boot camp, yes? He leaves today. Wow. Okay, so we will pray for him. Absolutely. Any others? Dawn, yes, Sister Dawn down in Texas. Have we heard anything, Mom, about nothing, huh? Wow, that's been a, what, about a month or so since we've heard it? Wow. I would challenge everyone, if you know Don, maybe reach out to her. And maybe by next week we'll have an update or something we can bring to the table. We pray about her a lot. Anybody else? All right. Let's go to Jesus. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful once again to come to you. We love you. We thank you for everything that you do each and every day. We bring this list to you, Lord. Sister Mary, it it seems as though with talking to her sister that she's starting to decline, having some more troubles. Lord, we just bring her to you. She is a very loving person. She's a great member of this body, Lord, and we just ask for some healing for her. We just pray that You would soften her heart to maybe getting extra help, something to take some of that worry and and possible harsh thoughts that might creep into her sister. (laughs) Lord, we just ask that you would just be there, keep them both safe, give Ginger some, some rest and some healing for herself. Lord, I'm sure that's a big care for her. We just bring Mary to you. And Lord, for Shannon, Andrew, and Michelle, we bring them to you as well, Lord. Touch upon them. Bring them home. And for Linda's family and the firefighters out in Clark Fork fighting that fire, Lord, keep those family members safe. Keep those firefighters safe as they do the work to to keep everyone safe, Lord. Just ask that your will be done in that. And for Corinne, Tom, and Cheryl's niece, Lord, we just once again ask for some healing there, Lord. As it is your will, let her get on that list for that transplant. For Aunt Ruthie, Lord, we're so grateful that you've brought her to us this morning. Lord, and whenever she is ailing, just heal her, Lord. Be with her. Let her know you're there at all times. 
And for Sister D, we ask the same, Lord. This church body loves her very much. And when she's not here, it's like the peace is not here with us. Be with her. Keep her safe. Heal her, Lord, and bring her safely back to us. For Brother Niall, down in California, Lord, we just ask that he would continue to make sure that he is following you and not getting lost in the fray of the world. Keep from printing upon his heart that you're the right answer. And for Brother Malachi, joining the military is, is pretty tough, but for him leaving today, Lord, just keep him safe. Get him to where he is headed safely. And finally, for Sister Dawn down in Texas, Lord, we bring her to you once again. You know the worry. You know the care. Just keep her safe and heal her, Lord, so we can see her again. For any unspokens, Lord, we bring those to you. You know you know the situations. Just ask your will be done. Be with the uh, barbecue after church today, Lord. Let us all have a good time and fellowship. And we ask this in your son Jesus' precious name. Amen. See you all at the barbecue. God bless you. Have a great week.